only thing we can be sure of about the future is that it will be absolutely fantastic. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to this special episode of Into the Impossible. Recently, the University of California San Diego Institute for the Arts and Humanities commemorated the 100th birthday of Primo Levi with a symposium remembering his life and the example he set of uniting scientific and literary cultures. Primo Levi was a chemist, a writer, and a survivor of Auschwitz. He said that stitching together molecules taught him to stitch together words and ideas. This episode of Into the Impossible is dedicated to the memory of Primo Levi. Today we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Luca Lignani. He's a research fellow at the Scripps Institute, and he studies, among other things, the origins of life and how that is affected by the chirality of molecules. So why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you and how you get into this work. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Luca Legnani, and this is the um, the field I'm, I'm studying. So I'm a, a postdoctoral fellow in the, uh, in the group of uh, Professor Blackmond. And what we are trying to understand or to collect more evidences about is uh, the general picture is the uh, origin of life, so how life started on our planet, and more specifically, how, uh, how is the origin of homo chirality, so uh, why the uh, molecules that are part of our body and part of the body of, uh, of many living organisms, why they have a specific chirality, and how this uh, started. So, Luca, you, you're obviously Italian. Primo Levi was Italian, so you that, you know you know about him. What was it about his work that inspired you? Uh, yeah, well, Primo Levi is very famous in in Italy and worldwide, mainly because of his work uh, uh, about the Holocaust during the Second World War. But Primo Levi was also a chemist, and the uh, he was inspired by chemistry, so he, he wrote many short stories about about chemistry. And I'm pretty uh, sure, I would say that also with these uh, short stories, with his uh, writing, he also inspired uh, different generations of uh, uh, chemists, uh, for sure in Italy, but I'm also pretty sure uh, worldwide. Uh, tell us about how your work intersects with this interest you had in Primo Levi. Um, well, Primo Levi wrote probably regarding chemistry, his most famous uh, book is the uh, Periodic Table, in which he has different short stories, and every story is uh, dedicated to a specific uh, uh, element of the Periodic Table. Uh, But we don't have to forget that also Primo Levi was uh, one of the main other big topics he was interested about was also origin of life. That's a little bit the uh, branch of research I am uh, uh, involved to. Um, So he wrote for example, the short story is his own maker that was published in 1971, in which Primo Levi imagines to have such a, a long memory by which he can go back in the past and uh, uh, look at the different stages and paths that brought uh, a simple bacteria evolving to more complex uh, animals, so also bringing it to the form of, uh, uh, of a human. Another in- interesting short story is, for example, Carbon, that was also published in the uh, in the 70s, and in the short stories carbon, he uh, takes a molecule, uh, he takes an atom of carbon, and he follows it into different uh, into different stages. So, in the atmosphere, as a molecule of carbon dioxide, then uh, ending up in the um, in a plant, for example, or in different animals. The literature, the, the the writing, and the the the, the metaphors and the, um, the the style of his writing it inspired a lot of science, a lot of, a lot of uh, scientific investigation. Uh, I think it's both ways. So it's for sure, as you're saying, uh, these his writing uh, interested many chemists, many scientists, and for sure. Many have been inspired by his work, and also the other way around. So uh, Primo Levi was, uh, as I said, he was a good chemist, and he well knew what was going on in the scientific community, and more specifically in the uh, in the 
chemistry community. So he was also, he, he took inspiration for many of his short stories by the uh, scientific discoveries and by reaction elements and uh, uh, molecules. And we can find them in uh, uh, many of the, of the short stories he, uh, he wrote. So here's uh, one of your slides that talks about the carbon cycle. Yeah, and exactly. Uh, the, the short story is uh, Carbon that was published in the, uh, in the 70s, in 1975, um, follows the, uh, the journey of an atom of carbon, as I said, in, uh, into different uh, living organisms, such as like plants, animals, but also in, uh, as a non-living matter. So, for example, in the atmosphere as, as carbon dioxide or uh, in the ground. And yeah, in the 70s also other uh, authors were interested in, in the origin of life. So for example, um, Carl Sagan, uh, as in the, in the first slide, uh, he tried to imagine the uh, origin of life in, uh, and he condensed the, 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 the story of the, of, the, of the universe in a one year calendar. Um, and he condensed the origin of life only in one, uh, in one month. So right here at uh, UCSD, we have a legacy, uh, which was the famous uh, Miller-Urey experiment, which is trying to prove abiogenesis, right? Uh, yeah, Miller and Urey were, uh, they later on became professor here at uh, UCSD, and they were the first that could uh, confirm the hypothesis of Oparin. So Oparin was this uh, Russian biochemist, and he was the first one who suggested that uh, molecules could uh, uh, grow into uh, more complex uh, structure and more complex molecules. And Miller and Yuri, that's what they uh, could uh, they could prove. So basically, they took some sort of this apparatus and they started refluxing and applying uh, uh, electrical charges to a mixture of uh, uh, inorganic and simple matters, uh, uh, inorganic molecules such as, for example, uh, methane, ammonia, hydrogen. And by refluxing under uh, uh, warm temperature for uh, uh, many days, uh, after analyzing the uh, content of these, uh, of these apparatus, they could find more complex uh, molecules, such as, for example, amino acids. So this was the first time that somebody could prove a little bit the hypothesis uh, that was formulated like uh, 30 years before by uh, Operin, by this Russian uh, biochemist. So do you buy it? I mean, is... Uh is, is, is abiogenesis uh, something that has been proven? Uh, is there more evidence for it or less? The, there are definitely more evidence. So since the uh, experiment in the 50s by uh, Miller and Urey, also more, uh, uh, even more complex uh, molecules have been built into uh, conditions that are called uh, prebiotically plausible. So like into, for example, warming them up and by applying them uh, electrical charges. So yeah, mo e even more evidences are, are, have been collected since the, since the 50s. For sure, the experiment of Miller and Yuri is the, the, the most famous one, but there are uh, even, even, even more than, than those. So, so your, your work gets, gets more into this, uh, shown on this slide, which is the, the concept of chirality or the handedness of molecules. So first, tell us what chirality is. Uh, yes, chirality is what interests me, but again, it, it's also a, a big topic about which Primo Levi also was very interested. And he was uh, so interested that he also wrote his uh, uh, master thesis as an under undergraduate student at the University of uh, uh, Turin. So chirality is actually, uh, mm, or well, we can describe a, an object as being uh, uh, chiral when uh, it, it, it's not possible to superimpose it on its uh, mirror image. So the classical example that um, chemists use to describe uh, a chiral object is the example of one hand, because if we take, for example, the right hand, the mirror image of it, it's going to be a left hand, but we cannot superimpose the two images one onto the, uh, one onto the other. So also for this, for this reason, we usually speak about uh, right hand and left hand uh, uh, molecule. Another easy example can be also the one of a chair. So if we take a normal chair, this is a non-chiral object because uh, we can take the, su the, the mirror image of a chair and superimpose onto it. But on the other hand, if we take a chair like a conference chair with a side table on the side, in this case, we cannot 
superimposed the uh, image of, of this kind of a chair onto its mirror image. So in this case, we are in the, in, in the presence of a chiral object. And chirality is an extremely important uh, property in uh, uh, chemistry because if we have an atom of carbon, that's the fundamental uh, atom in the uh, molecules of life, and this atom of carbon is connected to four different uh, group of atoms or to four different molecules, then we are in the presence of a chiral molecule. And it's very, very important because uh, usually it interacts with living organisms in two different ways uh, according if we are using a right hand uh, chiral molecule or a left one. So very famous, for example, example of uh, uh, chiral molecules are the one of uh, uh, thalidomide. So right, thalidomide was commercialized uh, uh, many years ago, like in the 50s, if I'm not wrong, and it was commercialized as, as a, a drug to fight the, uh, the nausea in uh, pregnant women. Uh, the only problem is that the molecule that was active that was having the uh, benefit of combating this nausea effect was the right-hand molecule. Uh, and the problem, the main problem was that this kind of molecule was not commercialized as a pure, so it was not just commercialized as a right-hand molecule, but because it's just easier to prepare, it also costs less, it was commercialized as a racemic mixture. So 50% of the right form molecule and 50% of the left form molecule. And uh, uh, the left uh, uh, molecule uh, was then was uh, has been seen that was uh, causing a teratogenic effect uh, onto the babies that those pregnant women were uh, waiting for. So ju just to be clear about it, there's no difference in the physical properties of the molecule. Exactly, exactly. The same melting point, boiling point, same solute properties, same you know uh, chemical uh, formulas, Chemical formula, the table, same, exactly. Atomic number. Exactly, you're right. They are. They have the same uh, physical chemical properties. So this part of the uh, this part mm, this combines why they are so interesting and also so uh, difficult to work with. Uh, so the main difference is that they um, interact in a different way with other chiral molecules. So that's why uh, living organisms that are full of chiral molecules. Uh, they, if we take other chiral molecules, we are going to see them interacting in a different way with, uh, uh, for example, with our, with our body, with the body of, of the living organisms. So here's another example. Uh, yeah, exactly. This is the, the other example. So uh, methamphetamine, the left form of the, of the molecule, is sold as an over-the-counter uh, uh, drug, as a nasal decongestant. Uh, so this kind of molecule can be easily bought in uh, many pharmacies. What is not so easy to get your hands on is actually the right form uh, of this molecule, because the right form uh, of methamphetamine has actually effect as a, a recreational drug. Uh, so if you want to get this, then you will have to ask, for example, yeah, Walter White in the uh, in the very uh, famous uh, TV series uh, uh, Breaking Bad to prepare this for you. So Primo Levi was uh, uh, a good chemist and he knew that in a uh, uh, chemical reaction, so if we, are, if we want to prepare like uh, uh, two, two, uh, uh, a, a product formed by the left hand molecule and the right hand molecule, if we uh, are in the absence of a chiral template, so if we don't have any chiral molecules into our reaction mixture, what we are going to prepare is a so-called racemic mixture. So 50% of the left four molecule and 50% of the right four molecule. But in the other hand, if we are in the presence of a chiral template, so of a chiral molecule, we are going to, pre to, to, to be in the presence, so it's possible, it's no, not always occurring, uh, but it can be uh, that we are forming 60% of one molecule and 40% of the other, or to the point or where we are in the, uh, with 99% of a left molecule and 1% uh, of the uh, right one. And how these parts are uh, uh, very interesting, where they're uh, linked together with the origin of life, is because, uh, as I was mentioning before, uh, our body and the body of uh, mostly all the uh, living organisms are uh, uh, formed by chiral molecules. So for example, all the sugars that we are using are in the right-hand form. 
and the uh, amino acid that we are we're using are in the left end form. So for example, amino acid forming protein or uh, sugars that are part of uh, DNA and RNA. But now the, the big question uh, that, again, Primo Levi was asking himself in the short story, uh, Asymmetry in Life, is how it's possible that starting from simple molecules, uh, we could form only one hand form of the molecule. So the question is not if we can take uh, water, hydrogen, and methane, uh, methane for example, and, bring, uh, and forming for amino acid, because that was, as we discussed before, was uh, proven already by uh, Miller and Yuri. But the point is that how, at the origin of, uh, of the universe, if we didn't have any chiral template in it, why life is formed by 100% uh, one form of the hand molecule? So again, why, why we are in the presence only of right sugar and the left amino acid and not the other way around? So why we don't have like a uh, racemic, racemic mixture in the living organism or why we don't have the other way around, why we don't have uh, left sugar and uh, right amino acid, for example. That's also the, the, the very big and, uh, and general question. Um, chemists nowadays, in order to um, address this question, they divided this process that uh, would have um, potentially brought to the formation of, uh, again, left amino acid and right sugar and all the other molecules into different steps. So from a condition in the pre in where, we were, where we had a racemic mixture, so 50% uh, each of the two molecules, we need some events that would bring to an, uh, an anti-enriched uh, form of the two molecules, so a symmetry breaking, so f uh, going from 50-50 to 51-49. Uh, then following this step, we would have to increase this kind of imbalance that we're formed, so going from 51-49 to maybe, uh, let's call it, 90% 10, and then how these uh, uh, molecules here, uh, once they are uh, enriched uh, to this level, how they are uh, finally enriched to the 100% form of, uh, uh, again, for example, in this case, right sugar and left amino acid, and how this chiral information is even transferred into more complex molecules, such as uh, DNA or uh, uh, proteins. Um, one of the idea for what concerned, for example, the first step, the symmetry breaking, uh, was already uh, published discoveries in the 70s. So it, it has been seen that if we take, for example, a racemic mixture of uh, this amino acid, uh, valine, so 50% of each, and if we are irradiating this mixture with uh, uh, left uh, circularly polarized light, uh, we are going to degrade this mixture, but we are not going to degrade the two molecules at the same way. So at the end of the process, we are going to be in the presence of a little bit more of the left form of the amino acid versus the uh, right form. So it's not a big difference, it's going to be just 1%, but it uh, is important to start the whole process. What's interesting is that um, left circul uh, cir circularly polarized light was not probably present present in the uh, prebiotic herd. But uh, what has been discovered is that uh, from the space dust that uh, uh, is falling on our, on our planet, some amino acids are a little bit enriched. So there is a little bit more of the left form of this amino acid. Again, it's not a big uh, uh, amount. It's just like a few, uh, few points percentage of this EE. That's a parameter that chemists used to describe the uh, chirality. But this is also pretty fascinating because it's, uh, it might suggest that origin of life actually has an uh, origin out of uh, our planet. Um, part of the, um, for what concerns the second steps, there are different uh, uh, processes that have been uh, uh, described, that, that have been discussed. Uh, many of them, for example, take in account uh, different uh, crystallization processes. So um, crystallization in a, is a uh, purification method that uh, all the all the chemists uh, use in their uh, uh, in their lab to purify molecules. But they also might be involved in this process of uh, uh, growing this uh, impari this impurity in the um, in the mixture of right and left uh, uh, left molecules. So for example, if we take uh, um, a suspension in which there is in which there are amino acid derivative in the 
dissolved in the in the solvent, so in solution, but uh, also in equilibrium with their solid form. If we start from a little bit of an imbalance, so from 51, for example, of the left form versus 49 of the other one, and if we start steering very in a very vigorous way this kind of uh, suspension, after a few days we are going to be in the presence of 60% and 40% of the uh, other form. So we are growing into this uh, imbalance. And if we keep steering our suspension for uh, even more days, at, for example, after two weeks, we are going to be in the presence of only the left form of the uh, amino acid. So this is, for example, uh, um, an experiment that would suggest how it's possible to go from a 51-49 imbalance into a, a much uh, uh, bigger one. The last step of all of this process is also how to connect all of those uh, uh, reactions. So how all of these reactions uh, communicated uh, together to uh, bring at the end the, uh, the molecules that are forming life. So again, uh, for example, sugar into DNA and amino acid into uh, protein. So we are, what we are doing, for example, right now is to take uh, um, molecules such as amino nitriles that are likely to be present in our prebiotic herd. And uh, if we have a racemic mixture of them, and if we are, um, if we are inducing them to basic condition, uh, we are going to form uh, amino acid derivative in a 50-50% uh, uh, mixture, so in a racemic mixture. But if we, again, if we, in this kind of reaction, we are in the presence of a chiral molecule and not uh, as a random one, but right sugars, what we are going to form is more of the left form of the amino acid. So why do you think this happens? Is, is it, 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 it seems like there's, a, there's physical processes that tend towards this handedness with with no enzymatic or no bioactive uh, process that needs to happen um, yeah exactly mm, one of the in, in these in these hypotheses in these reactions that we are working on we uh, we think that uh, enzymatic reactions were not quite there because at that that point was like much forward uh, in the uh, origin of life uh, pathways. So uh, all of these reactions and, 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 uh, um, and processes, they actually are occurring because of the interaction of uh, chiral molecules that were already there. So uh, starting again, as I showed in the, in the presentation, so starting from this little imbalance, it, 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 it's then enough to have a little bit more of one form of the chiral molecule to give the to, to bring this chiral information and to propagate it into uh, uh into different molecules so, so so in your lab how do you study this how, how are you breaking this down um we have different reactions different processes that we are uh, that we are studying uh, one for example i i show it right now it's taking uh, it's understanding how um, sugars and amino acids are uh, communicating together um, because again, also how this chiral information is uh, transferred to uh, different molecules. So again, in this case, the two uh, most important ones, so sugars and amino acids. Uh, there are also different studies in which they involve the uh, polymerization, for example, of amino acid into more complex structures that are called peptides. And now, for example, the chiral information of peptides is also transferred to other uh, reactions. And this, uh, this last slide you have, it's, it's kind of asking, it's kind of begging the question that, that we started with. Uh, yes, because the, the, the origin of life is, uh, of course, it's part of a big picture, and uh, the, um, the, the origin of homo chirality, that's what we discussed today, uh, can also maybe help us to address how origin of life occurred. So if it occurred via a sequence of uh, preordained events, so in a deterministic view, or as a series of uh, um, random events, so in a stochastic uh, um, point of view. Um, of course, we can also not exclude that intelligent design played a role in the uh, origin of life, but yeah, as uh, scientists, we feel that this would be a, a pretty boring answer uh, to give. And in, and in your career, what is, uh, What's got you excited? Where do you want this to lead? 
uh, I think, for example, uh, there is much more to do for what concerns sticking to origin of life or what concern for example the different uh, metals so metal catalysis is actually a big uh, a big field in organic chemistry but i have the feeling that many uh, the, the role of different metals into the uh, reactions at the origin of life and not has, has not been uh, studied enough so this would be for example also a big uh, a big uh, uh, picture to try to to get more of a of an idea about uh, I would si simple simple metals uh, so iron or copper uh, or these uh, metals at the at the role at the at the origin of our of our planet at the origin of of life on the on the earth. So we just had a tour of our cosmology lab, and you saw the polar bear telescope, and you saw the small aperture telescope that's headed for the Simons Observatory, where we're looking at polarity of the universe's oldest light, the CMB, or Cosmic Microwave Background. How do you uh, feel about that? Did you see some some comparisons, some parallels to your work? Uh, yeah, I would say definitely. Like the uh, polarized light might, of course, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an influence in the... In the um, and the in the chirality that that then is part of our of life of 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 life of of our life and of of life of the of the living organisms so there are many 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 possible connections uh i think it's a, it's a matter of understanding if also the uh, the, the, the 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 energy of life is like enough to uh to be transferred then to a, to a process, to, to a reactions where would imbalance, again, uh, I will repeat a little bit myself, but if it's able to imbalance into one direction or the other, our racemic mixture. So again, if we are in the presence of a 50%, 50% a mixture of the two molecules, if, we, if this, uh, this light is possibly inducing the, either the degradation of one or the other one, or the uh, formation of one process versus the other to go in the in, in, in either one or the other direction. Well, Luca, I want to thank you for being on Into the Impossible. Thanks for the opportunity. Giving us some insight into your work and into the work and life of Primo Levi in celebration of his 100th birthday. Imagination.ucsd.edu For the Arthur C. Clarke Center for Human Imagination, I'm Stuart Balco. Thank you for listening. The only thing we can be sure of about the future is that it will be absolutely fantastic. Five, four, three, two, one.